All right, standing up with us here. Yes. In the A number one air hot seat is Ed McCaffrey on 105.3 The Fan. Thanks for joining us, man. It is my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. A little bit show. different, you think, with the Radio Row media scene from back when you were playing. This is a madhouse on a Wednesday. Was there even Radio Row in 94? <laughs> I don't know. I know we had an opening night. It was during the day. It wasn't even opening night, and we just sat in the stadium, and there was reporters out. That's all I remember. I don't. Uh, but I've been covering this for a long time. It gets bigger and bigger every year, doesn't it? It's just pretty insane. Now, you said you've been waking up our time out here when we start our show at 4 a.m. For what? Yeah, I'm doing some work with Sirius XM NFL Radio over there. So oh. I've been getting up at 4. We're 6 to 9, but i got to get over here from my hotel and prep and get ready to go. So I'm kind of used to getting up early. Who do you work with over there? We'll tell you if we... So Solomon Wilcox. You deal with Solomon? Oh, awesome dude. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Solomon's a good dude. All Bengal safety. Yes. Yep. All right. So I, I had a question because this, this, this popped up here. It has nothing to do with the game or anything like that. But when you're in a social situation and you show up wearing the same thing as somebody else. He loves this. What? Why are you standing next what, to what, me? What do you do? <laughs> well, you know, I played 13 years in the NFL, and I showed up wearing the same uniform as everybody ah, else. Yeah. <laughs> dumbass. Take that, <laughs> dumbass. I said social situation. I'm like, oh, who, social. Who, 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 who's part of the team over here? Where, wh what are we doing here? Where's your sweatshirt? Uh, there you I go. I was a golfer, individual yeah. athlete. Oh, there you I go. All right. Not a team sport guy. <laughs> he's All in right. that SEC cult. That's, throw, what, that's what he's throw worried Throw me about. the damn ball. I got gotcha. you. Right. <laughs> so how many of the Taylor Swift songs do you actually know that your wife and family banned this week? Oh, my goodness. I don't know the words to any, but I do have some on my phone. I, if I looked it up right now okay. they're on there um it's on the spotify <clears throat> gosh i wish i'm old man i got like <laughs> i downloaded a couple songs <laughs> that are on my phone that's all i know but lisa's a big fan yeah she has she jogs every day she keeps in great shape and she has many many of her songs on the playlist and she was one of the first people to support the whole relationship with uh, travis kelsey she's like i like it i think it's awesome she's just dating someone she likes so she's always supported her and i actually gave her a present it's like this Stephen Wilson piece of art. This guy's like this incredible artist. Anyway, that's, uh, you know, a Taylor Swift piece of art at our house that was after um, she started dating Travis Kelsey. But she's been a fan for a long time, um, even though it's the Chiefs and I yeah. played for the Broncos and we're playing them in the Super Bowl. But we did put the – I got to personally, I got to put the kibosh on for a week. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, she's I mean, one of the greatest artists in the world. So what was the reality of the suite situation, of not affording the suite, Daughter-in-law buying the suite. Where is the well, suite? Well, I'm, I'm collecting right now. I need 2.5 million more dollars. Can you chip in? <laughs> well, can we're you, wearing sweatshirts. Can you chip in? Yeah. We were going to get the Kardashian suite for 2.5. but um, No, so here's what happened last week. Set the record straight. All right. Um, the 49ers treat their families really well. And so they give you the option to buy up to 15 tickets. Now, tickets are like five grand a pop. They're not cheap. Um, and so Christian last Tuesday is like, hey, look, you got all my tickets. And then we started saying, you know, well, you know, I'm spoiled. Like, I like watching from, like, the 50-yard line. And, and Lisa and I have been going to uh, the Super Bowl forever, and we have really good friends that offer us tickets. So we could sit anywhere, but we're trying to keep the whole family together. Yeah. And that's a big ask. We're going to keep the whole family together, and, and so where are we going to sit? And we, and we don't really want to sit in the end zone because i got to watch the game, man. I, I can't. I'm not just a fan here. My kid's playing, right? Right. So we need good seats. So Christian last Tuesday is like, look, okay, here's all my tickets. I asked for the max. Here's all the tickets they gave me, just like they gave all my teammates. And here's my credit card. If you want to get better seats, get them. Um, and so he's like, but today is the last day I'm in the ticket business. So you guys do whatever you want. Wow. But I'm out of the ticket business starting tonight. And so we're like, okay, so give credit to Olivia. Olivia made a bunch of calls to try to get our family to get It's our family. It's all my kids. And she did a great job of finding a place for all of us to sit. But Christian was incredibly generous. He said, I want you guys to have, he literally said, I want you to have a great experience. But I got a game to play. Yeah. So after today, it's uh, you sit wherever you want. Do whatever you want to do. And so Lisa's like, we're not going to, like, literally get a $2.5 million suite. These suites are like one five to two five. That, yeah. That's wow. a lot of money for one football game, right? I'm like, you know, we can get really good seats and not necessarily spend that. So, look, we're all sitting together. We're all happy. Nice. And we're just hoping the 49ers give us something to cheer about. So are you like Jerry Jones and where, like, you have to have the exact same seating? Like, Jerry's got Steven. He's got his uh, glass washer on the right or in the back. <laughs> like, what are the rules with Ed McCaffrey while you're watching your boy play? Yeah, I'm intense, man. I'm watching the game. So I'm, I'm not the greatest 
guy to hang out with during the game. I'm, you know, I'm watching every single play, every single snap. I'm you won't have any drinks? I'm watching him. I'm watching as a coach. No, I don't drink during the game. I'm pretty intense. So um, everybody during the year, we, we did chip in for a suite during the year and because we had so many friends that gave us free tickets last year, we felt like mooches, so we bought our own suite this year <laughs> with our friends. And uh, But everybody knows I got my routine. I'm tunnel vision watching the game. Don't ask me something that has nothing to do with football right when Christian's taking a handoff. And we've had people <laughs> to do that, right? Hey, so, hey, did you hear about it? I'm like, dude, he's literally taking a handoff yeah. right now from Brock Purdy. Wait, maybe ask that question later. Um, and so we all get along. We were, it was a great suite group. And there were some players' families in there. It was incredible. But now this game, obviously, it's not a home game, and you got to – I mean, these tickets are super expensive, and you've got to find out how to keep everyone together, which is not easy to do, but it's all our family. And so they, they watch the game pretty seriously, too. They're football guys, and, you know, we watch it like a coach or like a player, not just like a fan. This is more to us than just a game. When I'm a, when I'm a fan, I'm high-fiving. I don't got to watch every play. I'm getting food. I'm having fun with right. my, my buddies, right? And I've watched a lot of Super Bowls where I didn't have a vested interest in the game, and I have a great time. I love football. Don't watch it the same way when one of my kids is playing. Ed McCaffrey joins us here at 105 through the fan. All right, so, like, the week leading up to it, so, like, right now, compared to when you were playing, like, you were so tunnel vision then, obviously, you know, focusing on the practice on the day, getting prepared. How are the nerves? Like, how nervous, like, do you get getting ready to watch one of your kids' games, like, even, like, a few days out? Yeah, great question. When I, when I played, man, I would sleep, like, 10, 11 hours a day. I'm like, and I would tell my family the same thing. Like, two weeks before, they give you all the tickets, and thank goodness Lisa took care of it. I'm like, hey, Lisa, here's all the tickets they're giving us. Here's the number of the person at the 49ers, the Broncos. Got any questions, call them. I love you. I'll see you when I see you. Uh, you know, every day she visit. But then I'm not doing anything but sleep, eat, practice, watch film, get ready for this game. Not talking to relatives. I'm not going. I'm not doing anything. And so I felt the best I ever felt going into Super Bowls, physically, except for one Super Bowl where I had a knee issue. I felt incredible. Um, going into the game in terms of being rested and being prepared. So, um, what was the other part of that question? Well, like compare like for this, like did you? Like, oh, you're, being you're, nervous. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I I had to when they were younger. I got more nervous than now because they're your kid. Like they you want them to do kid, well, yeah. right? And Christian played in. He's played in over ten championship games in his lifetime, and you get you want him to do well. It's your kid, right? So, but but you can get to the point where you're not enjoying it. Like, in, in like life's meant to be celebrated and enjoyed. And me being happy or, or nervous isn't going to affect the game at all. So I might as well sit back and enjoy it. So I do the best I can, the best any parent can do, right, when they're watching their kid do something they love to do, to appreciate where we are and to appreciate the people around me. And I'm going to be there to love them and support them no matter, no matter what happens. And nothing I do is going to affect the game. So I've learned to appreciate the experience a little more. There was a time where I wasn't even enjoying it. I was too nervous. And now, you know, I think maybe I've matured. You know, there, there's a lot of talk about the Shanahan tree and the Shanahan scheme that exists now. There's, there's a lot of these coaches, Mike McDaniel, D'Amico Ryans, guys like that, who have come from this Kyle Shanahan tree. And you started at the very top of that with Mike Shanahan, not only in San Francisco, but then in Denver. Uh, do you remember back, like, like Kyle being around the team at times, do you remember like thinking, like, oh, yeah, this guy's got a future? Did, did you anticipate him 20 years into the future being, like, you know, the, the kind of forward-thinking innovator that the rest of the league is trying to copy now? Yeah, I actually did. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember he was the ball boy in San Francisco when I first got there in 94, and he was in grade school. And uh, I just remember he was always smiling and laughing. I remember after practice, he'd like stand there and Jerry Rice would practice releases and Steve Young would make him run routes. And it was hilarious because they were killing him, right? It's like just kept throwing routes to him. <laughs> he was running back, trying to catch his breath. And you could tell he was happy and loved football from an early age. But then I, when I went to Denver, I got to know him a little better. He was around the team on the sideline, watched him play in high school, watched him play in college. And, uh, you know, our families got pretty close after I retired. And, Mike retired, and so uh, you could tell that he was a football guy. Like, he wanted to be a player for the longest time, and then he wanted to coach. Um, but I remember having a conversation, and this was probably when he was still in college. Got to talk a little ball um, on a vacation one time, and you could tell that he was already uh, getting it. Like, he, his, he had learned well from his father and from his other coaches that he played for, and, uh, and he expressed an interest in being a coach one day, and there was no doubt that he was going to be successful. So how exciting was that for you, though, when you know you got the news that Christian was going to be going to San Francisco, knowing, like, okay, I know the exact type of hands that he's going to be in and it's going to help foster his career? Yeah, Lisa and I were ecstatic for so many reasons. One, 
we went to Stanford and it's the Bay Area and all of our friends are out there and it's an easy trip from Denver. But also, you know, we know what kind of organization they were from Jed York on down, uh, having played for the 49ers. And, and uh, we knew what type of coach Kyle was and we knew his mindset and how he approached the game and which is similar to how his dad, future Hall of Fame coach Mike Shannon, approached the game. We knew that Bobby T is a legend. Anthony Lynn, my teammate, is a phenomenal running backs coach. Brian Gerisi was a quarterback coach. John Lynch I played football with at Stanford. The Kubiak guy, brothers were out there. And there were just so many people that we knew and trusted. And uh, so we knew he was going to the perfect situation. Also, I looked at the roster. I'm like, man, they got Debo and Kittle and <laughs> B.A. and uh, Trent over there. You got a good team here. You're going to a pretty good situation. Um, so we were ecstatic. But interestingly enough, Christian wasn't as um, sure about it as we were because he's like, look, I know you guys know the Shanahan's. Your families have this great relationship. But I was like four. Like, I don't remember uh, meeting. I remember Kyle and concept, but I don't really know him. And, you know, I'm going to a new team. I've been same place for five and a half years. What's this going to be like? And, and so one of the great storylines is that uh, Christian and Kyle met, like, the first or second day he was there, and they sat down for over an hour and talked about what football meant to them and how he was going to be used on the team and what their mindset was, and they got to know each other a little bit. So even though there's all these storylines about the family relationships and me going back, you got to remember, they didn't man-to-man, -man, they didn't know each other. And so, but after about an hour and so, hour or so in the meeting, Christian left there thinking, oh, yeah, I'm in the right place. Does John Lynch feel guilty about being in the hall before Darren Woodson? <laughs> not, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Hey, man, I took some shots from him. Well, first of all, you know I caught passes from John Lynch in college? He was a quarterback. Really? He was a baseball player, phenomenal baseball player, and he was a quarterback. And they, I caught passes from him in games. The dude was talented. Wow. Um, thank goodness he wasn't a safety hitting me in practice because <laughs> um, I took some shots from him in the game. That dude was one of the hardest hitting players of all time. Yeah, Ed, obviously Hall of Famer. Ed McCaffrey here uh, as a part of the low T center on 105 through the fans. So, this is about to be two on two, me and you versus these fools. Let's do it. Over John Elway. Let's go. Yeah. He's <laughs> my favorite quarterback. These two boys crapped on him a little bit, set the, strecker, uh, set the record straight on why John Elway is John Elway. Yeah, John Elway is John Elway because he <laughs> greatest quarterback of all time. What else are you going to – I mean, you could say there's another greatest quarterback of all time or a more accomplished quarterback of all time, but John Elway, you talk about the mobile quarterback, talk about the rocket arm, you talk about the competitiveness, the leadership, making plays with – he does every – he did everything, yeah. right? Make your and arguments, boys. He got to a bunch of Super Bowls before that, and then it walks off with – back-to-back -back Super Bowl championships. And we wanted him to come back again to try to make it three. And we actually had the best team in the league. We got upset against Jacksonville one year, and he played well, but we got beat. Um, but the, you know, I always wonder, what if Mike Shanahan and John Elway were head coach and quarterback earlier From in the his beginning. career? Would it have been no one Super can Bowls? Also, no, Yo, one, no one can name should've. the first receivers yeah. that, they play, that he played with beforehand. But I'll tell you what, John, was, I mean, when I got to the team, he was already a Hall of Famer. We already knew that. But he was one of the guys. He really was an old-school quarterback. One of the guys who just happened to have this rocket arm, mm -hmm. could have played two pro sports, was incredibly mobile, but was just this incredible leader. But he wasn't a rah-rah guy, right? He led by example. It's like, you know, he was confident because he was a great player. He picked up his teammates when they weren't playing well, and everybody played better when he was on the field. And how far away, real quick, are the Cowboys from San Francisco? Oh, I don't know. Hey, you know what? This year, pretty far away. <laughs> <laughs> N next year, you know, you start from scratch. That's what's crazy. One team gets to be a world champion. And then it's, bam, reset, zero. Low T center, I know you agree with getting the numbers checked, whether it's a blood test, the testosterone levels, in order to go ahead and make 2024 a good one. Yeah, I'm a big believer in getting tested. I'm in my 50s now, and unfortunately, not all my former teammates are with me. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons to get tested for everything. Early detection is important. Um, and so the last couple of years, my wife and I have gotten tested. You may test perfectly. You may be great, but wouldn't you want to know? And if you're a spouse of somebody who's you've noticed a change in their attitude or they seem depressed or they're lacking energy, why live that way? These things are treatable now and they're controllable. Don't try to be your own doctor. You know, get medically monitored. Have the pros do it. We appreciate the McCaffrey still coming around our radio station after the little incident misunderstanding <laughs> last year. So we appreciate it. Yeah, no, my pleasure, fellas. Thank you, Ed.